I continue speaking about the illusory nature of the reality. This time I want to combine this idea with the DNA. How is it possible that the reality is illusory but the DNA is real? My answer is that the reality is dual. It has two different properties. One is it's illusory and the second property it's real. The world is dual. There is something very real about it and something very illusory. 60 years ago most of the scientists believed that DNA is an, is an important and the genes are in proteins. And before that for the life of the humanity people knew about the genes, knew about bloodlines and inheritance but they didn't know what is the substance of it they use the word blood often assuming that there is a, that the genes are in the blood so on, on one hand the world is very very real there is a lot of reproducible predictable sturdy things in it the planet the sun the stars, the ocean, all of that is very predictable. It existed before the humanity. It's here, it's tangible. And yet there are some slippages, some exceptions, some miracles, some experiences when the reality becomes fluid and reveals that it is a dream. And most wonderful are channelings, which largely confirm that the reality is a dream. There is a lot of knowledge coming from channelings, from ancient sacred knowledge. And once you know what to look for, personal experiences, meditations, give you better glimpse into how things are. So DNA belongs to one of those things very real and yet on a borderline with a dream and one reason for that is because of its size DNA is pretty long each cell of the human contains about two meters of DNA about six feet of DNA packed in one cell and most cells of the human contain the same genomic sequence with small variations. But yet the width of the DNA is very tiny. It is only a few atoms wide. The code of DNA is written in four letters. A, G, C, and T. A, G, C, T. In seemingly random sequence. I'll just give you a random sequence. A, 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 G, G, A, G. C C C T G A G T A T G C C C G G G A T T T T T G A A A A G C T T G C A T T T C C T A T G. You get the idea. So each cell contains a genome, and the genome of a human is about three billion bases. It corresponds roughly to three gigabases to three gigabytes on your computer memory or smartphone memory. It's very familiar. Giga is billion, so the humanity, the size of humanity in, in number of individuals is about a little more than two giga humans. <laughs> so we are familiar with their number billion pretty well. We have a few billion people on earth, on earth and we have a few billion letters in our genomic code. So each letter is pretty small. The essential part of it is about is made of a, a hexagon and attached to it pentagon. That would be one type of letters A and G called purines. 
And the other type of letter C and T are just made of are made of hexagons. No, no pentagons, just hexagons. And they combine in a sequence. A G C T G C T A T G T G T G T T T T T C A C A C A A A. So these are pretty small. And at these small scales, the atoms behave following the rules of quantum mecha mechanics. The atom is not a ball anymore. You cannot look at it as a ball. It's more like a few clouds of energy. In the center, in the nucleus, it is very condensed energy called positive, ele electrically positive. And around it, there are electrons, clouds of electrons, very diffused and fluid, which are charged negatively, just called negative charge. And they're dan dancing around each other, negative around positive. And they follow the rules of quantum mechanics. They follow the rules of the waves. They can be either a particle or a wave. There is a dual property to the molecules of this size. Of this size, when they are so when they are so small, they are both the particle and the wave. And the wonderful property of DNA is that it, it is electrically conductive. These letters form a column called a stack. A stack. And this stack is electric, electrically conductive, so it passes electric, electricity as an electric wire. And apparently, I believe it could support oscillations, meaning vibrations. It can vibrate. The elect, electric Parts of it, electrons and protons positively charged. Electrons negatively charged, protons positively charged. Protons are also called, these are nuclei of hydrogen. So hydrogen nuclei positively charged are called protons. So electrons are tiny, clouds, tiny meaning they have tiny mass. Electrons, individual electrons, have tiny mass and they form clouds. So they don't look like particles until rare occasions when they behave as particles. They behave more like clouds and waves. Protons are heavier, way heavier. Maybe a thousand times heavier, I'm not sure. Maybe many thousand times heavier. But they also can behave as clouds. So protons are also parts of part of this system. The letters A and T form a pair, and they're bound by two protons. Two protons attract them together. And the letters G and C form another pair, and they attract each other through three protons. So there is a cloud of electrons and there are clouds of protons which dance around each other, forming a heli helices. Within the double helix, there are helices of electrons and helices of protons. And I believe this all vibrate at different frequencies. And the frequencies are of very uh, wide ranges. I believe some of them are very slow. These vibrations would be very, very slow like one oscillation in two minutes. Like, ooh, and then two minutes coming back. Very slow oscillations. And those oscillations were exper experimentally observed that DNA can oscillate with a period of two minutes. And some, some oscillations would be very fast. Uh, I think uh, the highest would be petahertz. which is 10 to the 15th oscillations a second. So we're going from uh, one oscillation a minute, which is uh, roughly 100th of hertz to 10 to the 15th of hertz. So it is uh, 
17 order of magnitude range of oscillations of DNA. I believe all of this is present. So there is a lot of a, a wide range of oscillations. I think so. Still, some of this still, still is hypothetical, but there is pretty much there are hints here and there in experimental data in, in theories that all of that is present. And it can dance, the DNA can dance the um, wave, um, the clouds in the DNA can dance, forming waves of complicated shapes, complex shapes. And these shapes depend on the sequence. So the sequence of DNA defines the shapes, how the clouds would dance. So when they dance in a specific way, forming a specific self-activating self pattern, well, these clouds could uh, focus the energy in one point, like bring together the energy in one point. It's called implosion. Dan Winter talks about implosions a lot. So when a lot of energy comes into one point. There is a big concentration of energy. And I believe at this point, if it's shaped right, um, it works as a, as a portal. It creates um, a vortex, and the vortex works as a portal. So the vortex is something that you, which is spinning, so some sort of a spiral vortex. And the portal is something which is transdimensional. Basically, it opens the window, the portal, the door, into another dimension. And that's where I believe is the main gate between the soul and the body. In each cell within the DNA, there are gates. I believe these gates are more active during the sleep. During the sleep, the gates are open, and during their waking time, it's, they are much more closed and much more limited in their activity. Also, they are open in meditation. The meditation and the, and the sleep and the dream state are both characterized by high coherence of neural electricity. So there is electricity in DNA and there is electricity in neurons. So the whole body becomes more coherent during the sleep and meditation. And uh, the waves become more coordinated. They dance a more orderly pattern the waves of the neurons and the waves of the DNA become much more orderly. This creates multiple implosions in the cells which open portals to the spirit and allow the exchange of information. One way the spirit from the body to the spirit, from the mind to the spirit, from the physical mind to the spirit, there is a transmission of experience and in opposite inform uh, in opposite direction there is the transmission also of experience wisdom advice hope um, program downloads and also there is a transmission of health so the spirit sends uh, orderly waves which would re recharge and recover the coherence and recover the um, orderliness, harmony of the body. In the meditation and in the sleep, there is harmonization of the, of the physical body through the DNA. Not only the DNA, but the DNA is their key because the DNA has very specific information-rich sequence. So it is the key which allows to direct the information to the right place. Also there, there are other conductive, so DNA is conductive, uh, neurons are conductive, and also microtubules. Microtubules are of about DNA size, but they are very simplistic. They don't have the, the code in their sequence. They contain very simple repetitive sequence of um, simple protein units. So these are also conductive, and they work as as a network spreading and connecting the information, spreading the information and connecting the DNA and the neurons into one 
big, huge network over the body. There is more unknown questions how the macrotubules reach to DNA. It's unclear yet. They don't reach. Com reach um, I don't think the microtubules touch the DNA most of the time. But um, there is some other way of transmitting the information from microtubules outside of the nucleus, nu out of the cellular nucleus to the DNA, which is inside. That is still unknown, but uh, pretty clear there is a, it is pretty clear that there are three types of wires in the body, the DNA, the microtubules, and the nerves. And they all work together to make a harmonic, uh, DNA, uh, harmonic electro, electro, electric oscillation. Light is also a form of electric oscillation. It's just part of the spectrum between this uh, 100 of the hertz and uh, one petahertz. There is there are frequencies of light which are around terahertz, hundreds of terahertz. So light is part of that story as well, and sound as well. Sound is again uh, on the other part of the spectrum. It is in hertz between. Uh, tens of hertz and, and uh, thousands of hertz. So there is a lot of oscillations and light, light and sound are part of it. With that I conclude, happy dreaming, happy meditation, happy communication with the spirit. Good day.